Once upon a time, a long time ago, I used to have this really old school accounting boss who was the global director of accounting and he used to yell things out of his office off the top of his lungs, things like, who's the idiot who shared the financial package with management without consulting me first? And so as you can imagine from this scenario, his management and mentorship style were super different than what you and I are used to and what is acceptable in today's work environment. But at the same time, even though he was super mean, he was actually very knowledgeable and very experienced and very nurturing and I learned a great deal from him. So in this video, I want to talk about that. So here's a quick agenda for today's video. First, I'm going to talk about a couple of my previous mentors. I'm going to talk about the pros and the cons and the different types of personalities that I had to deal with and learn from. And then second, I'm going to share with you the characteristics and the qualities that make a really good mentor, a really good boss. And then third, I'm going to share with you my three important tips on how to find a good mentor. So let's dive right in. But first, a big thank you to my supporters in Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. If you're curious about my Patreon group, there are three main benefits to joining the group. The first one is that you get to download every single Excel file that I discuss here on the channel. The second one is that you get to chat with me directly on Discord once a month during my office hours. And the third, you get up to 50% on all of my online courses. So go ahead and check it out. I'm gonna leave a link down below. All right, so straight out of college, the first job that I got was as an auditor at PwC. And so my first mentor was the young senior auditor on the engagement that I was assigned to. And so by definition, and because of her young age, she hadn't yet developed the tools to become a good mentor. I'm sure she learned that down the line, but back then, all she did really was just give me directions on how to get the work done without showing me the reasoning why we're doing the things that we're doing or the big picture for the audit. The second thing that was working against us is that she was extremely, extremely busy. And you can look up any video on YouTube about how an audit works at a big four, and you'll find that the senior on the engagement is the one one with the most amount of work and that meant that she didn't have any time to sit with me coach me nurture me mentor me and so everything that I learned pretty much in my experience at uh, PwC was because of my own digging into uh, different things in the audit and asking the questions more than being mentored or being coached into the work All right, now we're gonna fast forward a few years and I went to work at a bigger corporation as an accounting manager and my boss at the time was the controller. And this is the old school controller that I was referring to at the beginning of this episode who was super knowledgeable, super experienced, but had zero patience or tolerance for anything. So you couldn't ask this man a question twice. If you ask him a question once, you had to write down the note because you know very well that he cannot ask the same question again, which is good in general because that gives you another uh, skill in your, in your bag of skills that you should take good notes and understand exactly the answer from, from the first time. Ask all your questions at the first chance because you're not gonna get a second chance to ask about the same topic again. All right, so what are the pros and cons of working with someone like that? Well, the first pro is that he's super experienced, super knowledgeable. So with him, I learned how to set up a proper accounting team when it comes to accounts payable, accounts receivable, how to run an external audit, uh, how to set up the financial reporting structure. So I got a lot of experience working with him and that was great because of his many, many years uh, of being a CPA. Okay, so that was the first thing. That's the first pro. The second pro is that he was a, a value-driven man. And so one of the things he used to tell me is that, Bill, when your boss is not around, that's when you should work the hardest. Okay, so I learned that from him. And to this day, it's funny, but to this day, whenever my boss is on vacation, I remember what he told me, and I actually work harder on that day than the day when, when my boss is around. And so this value-driven approach has been really good for me to learn uh, these values early on, and then I can pass it on to whoever I'm mentoring in the future. In terms of cons with this man, I already talked about it a little bit. He had zero patience or tolerance for misunderstandings, and that meant that uh, before going to him with any question or problem that I had, I had to have done some research first and came up with at least an answer or a proposed answer before going to him. Um, and that has been good for me in general because that taught me to be independent and um, you know, do my own research first and not being so dependent on someone else to give me the and feed me the answer, right? And so this is good in general. It's just the way that he was, he was just uh, an impatient person, um, not good or bad, but um, in many cases it was annoying for me as someone who's trying to learn because I knew I couldn't ask the same question or touch on the same subject twice. You have to do it once write good notes and be done with it. And that was my old school controller boss. 
All right, we'll fast forward a few more years and I went to work for a smaller manufacturing company. Uh, my boss now is a young CFO who comes from an FP&A background. So not an accounting background, but more from the financial planning and analysis side. And the first pro in our relationship is that now because he doesn't come from an accounting background is that I got complete autonomy uh, over the process of accounting and financial reporting. And so that was the first pro in our relationship is that I got to have 100% say into the accounting setup and the financial reporting process. And that was great for me in terms of owning uh, that function of the company. The second big pro to our relationship or mentorship was due to the fact that he came from an FP&A background. And so that meant that he taught me everything I know about KPI design. And these are all the KPIs that I teach in my online course, link in the description. But these are important uh, KPIs such as gross margin by SKU, DSO, DPO, and so many others. And so that was really important in my career overall. The other thing also is that we were almost at the same stage in life as well. And so we were at the same stage in terms of having formed a family, having children. And so he understood that I had obligations outside of work and I had family to go and spend time with and not work super late uh, at the office. And so that was great in terms of a working relationship too. All right, in terms of cons with this boss, not a whole lot. Maybe the only thing to mention is that he wasn't an accountant by profession or by training. And so I couldn't learn from him things that relate to my own career as an accountant. Uh, but at the same time, like we just mentioned, the flip side of that is that he came from an FP&A background. So I was able to learn from him a lot in the analysis side, but that meant that I couldn't get a lot from him in terms of accounting because he wasn't an accountant or a CPA. All right, now we talk about one of my more recent bosses or managers and I call him the private equity boss. And I call him that because he worked at private equity for a number of years and that kind of shaped the kind of professional that he is. The biggest thing I learned from this mentor is how to design effective slides or presentations. And so he taught me how to uh, design slides that can tell a story uh, with fewer images or words on them and more of you telling the story alongside the slides. And so maybe before that, when I used to design my slides for presentations, I used to put everything in my mind on the slides, right? Just like kind of have a mental diarrhea on the slides of everything that I have in mind and put it on there. What I learned is that for the viewer who is looking at the slides, it's better to have less um, you know, graphs or images and less words in general, less content overall. And you accompany that with you telling the story alongside the slides. So I learned that uh, sort of design skill from uh, working for this person. The second really cool skill that I learned working for this mentor is in the area of soft skill. And that is when you have a feedback for someone, tell them what you want rather than stating what you don't like, right? So be positive more than negative. So say what you want more than just stating what you don't like. And to give you an example, let's say you ask someone for a payroll report, right? So I asked someone for a payroll, payroll report. They give it to me, I look at it, and it's not really helpful, right? Maybe it's missing a column for you know the state where the employee is, or it's missing a column for their address, right? So when I go to them with feedback, rather than stating that the report is missing column X and column Y, just say what you want, right? Just say, you know, thank you so much for your, for the report you sent me. Um, I'd like to, if the report would have a column for state and a column for the address, right? So just ask for what you want rather than stating what you don't like, right? So it's really simple, but very powerful for me when I used it uh, in my career after that. All right, so what are the qualities or the characteristics that makes a really good mentor? Okay, so now we have five of those to discuss. The first one is that this is someone who's gonna give you on the spot feedback. And that means that they're not gonna wait uh, a day or two or a week or your next performance evaluation to talk to you about how do you wanna see your output or your deliverable improved, right? They're gonna give it to you on the spot so that you can improve uh, your work product. Okay, so on the spot on the spot feedback is really important. The second one is that this is someone who's gonna commend you, right? When you do a good job, they're gonna tell you you did a great job and they're gonna ask you to do more and more, right? So commending you is gonna lift your spirit and it's gonna allow you to do better work in the future. So uh, meaning that if a boss is always negative, that's bad for you in general, right? So you want somebody who's gonna commend you when you do a good job and then give you feedback when you do a poor job. Okay, uh, the third thing is someone who's gonna explain the big picture, right? So this is really important and I talk about this a lot 
and you want a mentor who's uh, not just gonna give you directions on what to do, but tell you why you do things and how that connects to the bigger picture in terms of your accounting or audit or whatever the case is, connect the small daily task to the bigger goals and the bigger picture of what's going on. Okay, the uh, fourth thing is that they know their trade, right? So you wanna choose someone to work under uh, someone who's experienced. In my case, um, it was easy because if somebody has a CPA des designation, by definition, they most likely would have enough experience to teach me what I need to know to develop my career. And then the fifth thing is, is someone who's gonna challenge you with strategic work, right? So <clears throat> this is a boss who's not afraid to give you tasks um, that are more challenging. Uh, it means that they'll give you more coaching. Uh, they, have to, they have to work a little harder because they have to give you more coaching and more directions. Uh, but this is important for you to develop your career is to get involved in more strategic tasks uh, and not just the day-to-day -day, uh, sort of uh, data entry or mundane activities of the accounting team. All right, now I'm gonna share with you three important tips on how to find a good mentor or a good boss. So the first one is trial and error. And that means that don't be afraid to leave a bad mentor or boss. And for me in general, this had worked out in a way that I go to work for someone for a year or two. If they're a good mentor or a good boss, I'll stick with them, but if not, don't be afraid to leave and find a better mentor. This is really important for you to develop your career is to have someone to guide you and coach you into becoming a better professional. So trial and error is really important. Don't be afraid to leave a place that doesn't have a good mentor. So that's the first one. The second uh, is to push hard with questions during the interview process. So you'll say you're interviewing for a job uh, and you speak to the hiring manager. This is the person who would be your boss, right? So don't be afraid to ask a couple of different questions or three questions on different things around the company's culture, about the team setup, about how the team bonds together. When you ask many questions and you push a little bit, then you get to see the personality of the other person come across. Are they impatient? Uh, are they abrupt? They give you like a yes and no answer because now they're kind of tired of your questions, right? Uh, so don't ask a million questions, but I'm saying at least ask, you know, two to four questions that are really gonna give you some um, you know, idea of this person's patience in answering your questions because you want a mentor who is patient, right? You want somebody who's gonna uh, coach you and guide you, so this person needs to be patient. And the third one I have is ask to speak to someone. So during the interview process, ask to speak to someone um, who's also shared that same boss with you. So somebody else who works for that person, right? So you can ask them a few questions about their uh, management style and get a gauge of how they coach and how they train uh, their staff. And so these are my tips on how to find a good mentor. So if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you feel like you can share it with someone else who can benefit from it, go ahead and share it. I would really appreciate that. And I'll see you in the next video.